I am Bill Cartwright with Living Right with Bill Cartwright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am Bill Cartwright and I am here with the super millennial, David Barreto. Ready to rock this out, Dave? Let's do it. It's one of my favorite days. I know you love this book, I right? I'm excited. So this week, our focus was on value. And on Motivational Monday, we discussed creating a value mindset. Uh, on Health Huddles, we talked about the value of health. Wednesday's Meeting of the Minds, we talked about the connection of integrity. And this week's... Uh, Connection Thursday was fun for me. I enjoyed it. But we went a little bit into some of the uh, deeper values and the difference between knowing and believing. And we will be continuing, as David said, our book is with Osho's Emotional Wellness. And we are finishing the chapter, Understanding the Roots of Jealousy. Uh, announcements, how are we doing on, our, on the event? How's it looking? It's getting good, guys. We're right at the two-week mark. Uh, yeah, it's so getting it's, interesting. Everybody's getting excited. I'm getting all the emails. Everyone I saw I saw a bunch of orders coming yeah. today. What, what, what is it the last couple of weeks? Yeah, right? we got a That's few cool. coming down, and it's cool to to see the people who are um, attending are professionals in their field. Yeah, you I know? love that. It's, I see that. I saw like the you same said, thing. you know, to come to network them. The, I saw the same thing. I'm, I'm surprised at some of the people coming in. It's really yeah. kind of cool. And and so on November third, November fourth. Awakened Connections. It's David's first Awakened Connections, one of many, because it looks like this has been a very successful uh, little thing. You haven't worked hard on it at all. Have you? <laughs> Read the damn book. The links are below. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get started. Oh, you've never worked so hard. You didn't know. No, you guys are going to enjoy it. You'll see yeah, everything gonna that's been show. put into it. You've it's going to be really an amazing well. experience. I have to say, I've been watching you work. So... Osho is, we're finishing up that chapter of jealousy and Osho is posed a question. Here's the question. It seems to me that jealousy arises not only in romantic relationships, but in all sorts of interactions with other people. Maybe envy is the right word for it, but it still means I'm resentful when somebody has something I want, but don't have. Can you talk about this kind of jealousy? So Osho replies, we have been taught to compare. We have been conditioned to always compare. Somebody has a better house. Somebody has a more beautiful body. Somebody has more money. Somebody else has more charismatic personality. Compare, go on comparing yourself with everybody else you pass by and a great jealousy will be the outcome. It is this byproduct of the conditioning for comparison. So in Stress Mastery, what Osho's talking about, that is the want of approval. Remember, there are four basic wants that hold the ego together. The want of belonging, the want of control, the want of security, and the want of approval. It's the want of approval that creates a competition uh, mindset that you ha are comparing yourself. So Osho continues, Otherwise, if you drop comparing, jealousy disappears. Then you simply know you are you and you are nobody else and there is no need. It is good that you don't compare yourself with trees. Otherwise, you'll start feeling very jealous. Why are you not green? And why has existence been so hard on you such that you don't have the capacity to bear flowers? It is good that you don't compare yourself with birds, with rivers, with mountains. Otherwise, you will suffer. You only compare yourself with human beings because you have been conditioned to compare yourself only with human beings. You don't compare yourselves with peacocks and with parrots. Otherwise, your jealousy would be greater and greater. You would be so burdened by jealousy that you would not be able to live at all. Comparison is a, a very foolish attitude because each person is unique and incomparable. Once, you, once this understanding settles in, Jealousy disappears. Each is unique and incomparable. You are just yourself. Nobody has ever been like you and nobody will ever be like you. And you need not be like anybody else either. Existence creates only originals. It does not believe in carbon copies. 
So he has a little story here. A bunch of chickens were in the yard when a football flew over the fence and landed in their midst. A rooster waddled over and studied it. Then he said, I'm not complaining, girls, but look at the work they're turning over next door. <laughs> <laughs> next door, great things are happening. The grass is greener. The roses are rosier. Everybody seems to be happy except you. You are continually comparing. And the, and the same is the case with others they are comparing too. Maybe they think the grass in your lawn is greener. It always looks greener from a distance. And that you have a more beautiful wife. You are tired of her. You cannot imagine why you allowed yourself to be trapped by this woman. You don't know how to get rid of her. And the neighbor may be jealous that you have such a beautiful wife. You may be jealous of him for the same reason. He may be feeling the same about his wife. So think about this, David. Osho wrote this book before social media and Facebook and all this stuff where comparison is all day, every day, every second, right? What do you call Facebook when they put up their, what do you call them? It's their highlight reels. Highlight reels, right? It's comparison. So everybody's kind of looking and comparing themselves to that. Isn't that crazy? So this, he's writing this before social media. Imagine how he would look at it today. So Osho continues, everybody is jealous of everybody else and out of jealousy, we create such hell and we become very mean. So he has another story. An elderly farmer was moodily regarding his ravages of the flood. Haram, yelled a neighbor, your pigs were all washed down the creek. How about Thompson's pig? pigs, asked the farmer. They're gone too. And the Larsons? Yes. Huh, grunted the farmer, cheering up. It ain't as bad as I thought. <laughs> he's got great stories. He's, he's just a joke. He's just full of it. <laughs> yeah, he's got it rolling today, doesn't he? So, Osho continues. If everybody else is in misery, it feels better. If everybody else is losing, it feels good. And if everybody else is happy and succeeding, it tastes bitter. That is a sad truth, David. I am so... Sorry to hear that because it's a sad truth. It, people just don't know how to be happy for other people. Mm -mm. And they love to see somebody fall. That's why they love it when a celebrity falls or somebody makes a mistake. They love to watch that. That's primetime TV now. Isn't that? It's sad. It's what he's talking about. Also continues. But why does the idea of the other enter into your head in the first place? Again, let me remind you. It is because you have not allowed your own juices to flow. You have not allowed your own blissfulness to grow. You have not allowed your own being to bloom. Hence, you feel empty inside. But you look at each and everybody, everybody's outside because only the outside can be seen. You know your inside. You know the other's outside. That creates jealousy. They know your outside and they know their inside. That creates jealousy. Nobody else knows your inside. Their you know you are nothing worthless. And the others on the outside look so happy. Their smiles may be phony, but how can you know they are phony? Maybe their hearts are also smiling. You know your smile is phony because your heart is not smiling at all. It may be crying and weeping. You know your interior and only you know it. Nobody else. You know everybody else's exterior and people have made their exteriors beautiful just as you have. Exteriors are showing are show pieces and they are very deceptive. That is social media. Yes, it is. That is social media. There is an ancient Sufi story. A man was, very, was much burdened by his suffering. He used to pray every day to God, why me? Everybody seems to be so happy. Why am, why am only I in such suffering? One day, out of great desperation, he prayed to God. You can give me anybody else's suffering and I am ready to accept it, but take mine. I cannot bear it anymore. That night, he had a beautiful dream. Beautiful and very revealing. He had a dream that God appeared in the sky and he said to everybody, bring all your sufferings into the temple. Everybody was tired of, this, of his suffering. In fact, everybody has prayed sometime or other, I am ready to accept anybody else's suffering, but take mine away 
This is too much. It is unbearable. So everybody gathered his own sufferings into a bag and they reached the temple and they were all looking very happy. The day has come. The prayers have been heard. And this man also rushed to the temple. Then God said, put your bags by the walls. All the bags were put by the walls and then God declared, now you can choose. Anybody can take any bag. And the most surprising thing was this. This man, who had been praying always, rushed to get his own bag before anybody else could choose it. And that, and he was in a he was in for a surprise because everybody else also rushed to get his own bag, and everybody was happy to choose it again. What was the reason? For the first time, everybody had seen others' miseries, others' sufferings, others' bags were just as big or even bigger. And the second reason was that everybody had become accustomed to their own suffering. Now to choose somebody else's, who knows what kind of sufferings will be inside that bag? Why bother? At least you are familiar with your own sufferings and you have become accustomed to them and they are tolerable for so many years you have tolerated them. Why choose the unknown? So the whole thing about that is this. You understand that suffering actually becomes part of your identity. Mm -hmm. If you complain enough, you blame enough, you get into poor me energies enough that it becomes your predominant energy, then your identity is suffering. You understand that, David? Yeah. yeah I think it's amazing. You see that, we saw that a lot in the clinic. That was the big thing I used to see all the time. Yep. And it was sad because these people had worked their whole life and now they're retired and they're older and they're, all they can talk about is their suffering. And they live in their suffering each day. And they day. relate with it. It became a group. Yeah, it had. They had their own suffering group. You were absolutely right. You had this. You had the, the suffering groups. So he continues, Osho continues, because of jealousy, you are in constant suffering and you become mean to others. Because of jealousy, you start becoming phony. You start pretending. You start pretending things that you don't have. You start pretending things that you can't have, which are not natural to you. You become more and more artificial, imitating others, competing with others. What else can you do? If somebody has something and you don't have it and you don't have a natural possibility of having it, the only way is to have some cheap substitute for it. So here's a story. Jim and Nancy Smith had a great time in Europe this summer. They went everywhere and did everything. Paris, Rome, you name it. They saw it and they did it. But it was so embarrassing coming back home and going through customs. You know how customs officers pry into all your personal belongings. They opened up a bag, took out three wigs, silk underwear, perfume, hair curling, really embarrassing. And that was just Jim's bag. <laughs> just, just look inside your bag and you will find so many artificial, phony, pseudo things for what? Why can't you be natural and spontaneous? It is because of jealousy. The jealous person lives in hell. Drop comparing and jealousy disappears. Meanness disappears. Phoniness disappears. But you can drop it only if you start growing your inner treasures. Personal development, people. There is no other way. Grow up. Become a more and more authentic individual. Love yourself and respect yourself the way existence has made you. And then immediately the doors of heaven open for you. They were always open. You simply had not looked at them. That is amazing stuff right there. I have no comment. Anything you want to add no. to that? That is so good, right? That is the truth. So then the next question comes up. That's posed to Osho. The question is, I am very suspicious of my wife. Although I know she is innocent, what can I do to drop my suspicions? Osho responds, there must be something in you that you are really suspicious of. Unless you can trust yourself, you cannot trust your wife or anybody else. If you mistrust yourself, you will project your mistrust on people around you. The thief thinks that everybody is a thief. It is natural because he knows himself and that is his only way of knowing others. What you think about others is basically a declaration of what you think about yourself. 
you know that if your wife is not constantly watching you, you will do something. You will start flirting with some woman. You know it. Hence the fear. If I'm in the office, who knows? The wife may be flirting with the neighbors. You know perfectly well what you are doing with the secretary and that's what is creating the problem. That's why you say, though I know my wife is innocent, still I am suspicious. You remain suspicious till something in you drops. It is not a question about the wife. All questions, when they arise, are really about you. Yes, that's mirroring. That's, I, think, I like the idea of what, what he explains a thief. Mm -hmm. Every thief thinks everybody's a thief, right? It's the truth. So here's a story. A traveling man went on the road for a short trip, but kept staying away. Every few weeks, he'd send his wife a wire saying, can't come home, still buying. Every wire was the same. Can't come home, still buying. This went on for three or four months. When his wife finally sent him a wire that said, better come home, I'm selling what you're buying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's how that's how things happen in life. And Osho goes in with another story. The hungover couple talked about the wild party they held the night before. Darling, this is rather embarrassing, said the husband. But was it you I made love to in the library last night? His wife looked at him reflectively and asked, about what time? <laughs> so you see how jealousy works, right? So he continues, also continues. The basic mistrust must be about yourself. This is really important, people. You are suspicious of yourself. Maybe you are repressing too much. And whenever somebody represses something, it starts projecting it in others. It almost always happens that the man who has a murderous instinct is always afraid that others are thinking to murder him. He becomes paranoid. The person who is very violent is always afraid. Other people are so violent and I have to be constantly on the guard. Because people don't trust themselves, hence they can't trust anybody else. Wife, friend, father, mother, son, daughter. People are living in chronic suspicion. But the basic cause is that you have not been able to accept yourself. My criterion of a saint is one, who is able to forgive all and everybody because he knows himself. But your saints are incapable of forgiving. Your saints go on inventing more and more techno technologically perfect hells. Why? They have not yet been able to accept themselves. So here's a story. They tell the story about a young, good-looking attorney who claimed there never was a woman with whom he couldn't make it. One day, the office hired a very good-looking secretary whom for weeks every male tried to make and failed in the attempt. The young attorney boasted that if enough money was bet, he would succeed with her. When they questioned how he would prove it, he said he would record the entire action on his tape recorder, which he would hide under the bed. When all bets were made, he proceeded to make a date with her, and by the end of the evening, not only was she in his apartment, but eventually in his bed, whereupon he reached under and turned on the tape. In a, few in a few moments, in support of his reputation, the secretary was in a state of violent lovemaking and at its height cried out loudly, keep kissing it, honey, keep kissing it, whereupon the attorney, in his best courtroom manner, leaned under the bed and dictated into the recorder, let the record reflect, the lady has indicated her left breast. <laughs> the mind of the attorney was constantly suspicious and assuming the worst. Now, he must have become worried. Keep kissing it, honey. Keep kissing it. Keep kissing what? The record will not say anything. There may be suspicions. <laughs> wow. But this is the mind, and this is important. This is the mind of everybody. The mind is cunning. Remember when Osho talks about the mind, that's the ego in Stress Mastery. So let me continue. But this is the mind of everybody. The mind is cunning, calculating, suspicious. The mind lives constantly in a kind of distrust, in doubt. The mind's whole climate, the ego's whole climate, I'll just switch it, is that of doubt. So it's not a question of how to trust your wife. It is a question of how to trust 
Mind lives in the climate of doubt. It feeds on doubt. And unless you know how to put the mind off when it is not needed and descend into the heart, you will not know how to trust. So what he's talking about is connection to the heart. It's exactly what we talk about in Stress Mastery. So understand the head is the ego. The mind, as Osho puts it, the head creates the stories and all these stories of what's going on. And then when you have stories, create mistrust. So Osho continues, the climate of the heart is trust. Mind cannot trust. Mind is incapable of trusting and we have all become hung up in the head. Hence, even though we say that we trust, we don't trust. We insist that we trust, but in our very instance shows that we don't trust. We want to trust. We pretend to trust. We want others to believe that we trust, but we don't trust. The head is impotent as far as trust is concerned. The head is a mechanism for doubt. The head is constantly a question mark. You will have to know how to come down to the heart, which has been bypassed by society. The society does not teach you the ways of the heart. It only teaches you the ways of the mind. It teaches you mathematics and logic, and it teaches you science, etc., etc. But they're all the cult, cult, cultivation of doubt. Science has grown through doubt. Doubt has been a blessing as far as science is concerned. But as science has grown more and more, man has shrunk. Humanity has disappeared. Love has almost become a myth. Love is no more reality on this earth. How can it be a reality? The heart itself has stopped beating. Even when you love, you only think that you love, it comes through the head. And the head is not the faculty for love. And this is what he says. I think this is so important what Osho says here to close out this chapter. Start meditating. Start putting off the constant chattering of the head. Slowly, the mind becomes quiet. Get into things where the mind is not needed. For example, dancing. Dance and dance to abandon. Because in dance, the mind is not needed. You can lose yourself in a dance. In losing yourself in a dance, the heart will start functioning again. Drown yourself in music. And slowly, you will see there is a totally different world of the heart. And in the heart, there is always trust. The heart does not know how to doubt, just as the mind does not know how to trust. So that ends that section on jealousy. And next week, we will jump into from fear to love. So, David, that was interesting, huh? That was a good one. That was a good one. So what are your thoughts? The one thing I, I liked from it where it's like the self-awareness of yourself when you do like the mirroring thing. And the big thing that I like personally like dealt with through that, once I figured out that I had like, I don't want to say an issue, but a program, when I wasn't working on myself, all I could do is focus on that. It was a bigger problem. But like now, like I focus on it in a good way to like release that program. So like when you notice things like that, you're not working on yourself, like your ego will use that against you. I just think it's, it's fascinating what he's talking about, the same things we're teaching. He's talking about connecting the heart. See, when he talks about where the heart's disconnected is through tribalization. Mm -hmm. Those first seven years of life, the, the culture's job is to break the will of the child so that child will fit into the tribe. And that's the tribalization process. After seven years, you are cut off from the heart and given the identity of the head. And that identity of the head is where doubt is. What creates doubt? The ego creates doubt. What creates doubt is stories. Things can happen, but you're not going to feel doubtful or jealous unless there's a story. Stories cannot happen in the heart. Stories happen in the head because stories have to be from the past or the future. Mm -hmm. There's no story in the present moment. The heart is in the present moment. You can't be jealous in the now. You can't. It's impossible. And that is when you're connected to the heart. So I liked what he said is that sometimes you got to shut down the head. So we did an interview with Brett and we did an interview for our new uh, project to work with the kids, right? And Brett is my 16 year old son. And we asked him, how do you handle, you know, things like controversy? How do you handle disruption in your life? Because this kid's got an edge, right? 
And what did he tell us? Do you remember what he told us? How he handled that? He shuts down. He, he, he uses goes, yeah, he, music. Yeah. He uses music. And I thought, wow. All you, you and I just sat there and listened to him. So he said, Breck said, when he's sad, he listens to sad music. And he listens to sad music until the sadness dissipates and goes away. If he's angry, he actually picks angry music. And so what he's doing is he's actually staying within the energy of the activated program until it releases. When people develop jealousy, develop doubt, develop suspicion, it's when they're carrying the program and that program can only be carried through stories. And that's what the mind and the ego, what Osho's talking about does. What Brett kind of created, I, I didn't give that to him, created, he created his own method that Okay, I'm upset, so I'm going to be upset. I'm going to listen to music that's going to allow this energy that has caused me to be angry to go away. Mm -hmm. He doesn't carry it into the next day. Now I kind of understand him a little bit better because he's a weird kid. I never understood how, how, does no, how does nothing ever bother you. Well, it does bother him, but what he does is he doesn't repress it, he releases it. And I thought this was a, that's a good example of what, will you agree with me, what Osho was teaching here? Yeah, sit with it. Like, don't run from it. Like, yes. sit with it and like, yes. look at it. And use, I like that idea of using music. Mm -hmm. And he said, use dance. You know, you go out and dance. Let it go. If you catch me dancing, something's probably like really, really wrong. So, I have a challenge for you. Oh, boy. How about a little dance at this next event? Uh, you lost your mind. I told Come you on. something's really, really wrong. Can you wear, can you just do like the, what's a Scottish dance? When oh, you wear the skirts? God. No. You got nice legs though. I do. You really I do. do. I wear you some do. really short shorts. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it for today's show. We're going to end it on that note. Next week, we are going to be talking. Our topic is going to be rebuilding. I've got a very special Health Huddles interview for you guys. Get ready. This guy is fascinating with a new take on how to treat cancer. And how to rebuild the body. It's amazing what he talks about in there. So we have that interview. And we'll be talking about rebuilding next week. So that's it for today's show. Our mission is to create a shift in the planet. And you can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show. As always, until next time, stay inspired.